The opening month for the 2021 season for the Eastern Hockey League has officially wrapped up with 29 games played. The talent level is high and we are off to another great start in the E Show. And with that, let's start making our way around the E Show presented by the Penalty Box Foundation. The New England Conference seems to have picked up right where it left off, with the top four teams being within two points of one another. The New England Wolves have the highest number of players who've made the transition from the EHLP team to the EHL team, with 10 total players climbing the ladder. The Wolf Bite, as I like to call them, currently sits in first place in the New England Conference with one game in hand over the Seacoast Spartans. Captain Donnie Feldman and assistant captain Kevin Bite lead the Wolves in scoring with 8 points for Bite and 7 points for Feldman. And speaking of the Spartans, Seacoast currently sits in second place in the New England Conference with a total of seven points. The second year program defeated the Seahawks and picked up a pair of wins over the Eclipse. The only loss for the Spartans was a shootout defeat served at the hands of the East Coast Wizards. As the season continues, the leading scorers to watch out for are returning defenseman Bajorn Shupak and newcomer Azam Ziwa. As we move down the ladder of the New England Conference, the Vermont Lumberjacks and New Hampshire Avalanche each have six points in the standings and are tied for third place. Despite losing the EHL all-time leading scorer in Logan Descanio and 18 other AHL players, the Vermont Lumberjacks do not appear to be going through a rebuilding stage, with three consecutive wins to start the season. Returning 0-1 forward, Egan Schmidt has already netted five goals and tallied two assists, while 11 other Jacks players have found their way onto the score sheet so far this year. Similar to the Lumberjacks, the Avalanche lost 19 players to NCAA commitments. Three-year returning forward Chris Ahrens has proven to be a key part of the Avalanche lineup and leadership group. Despite dropping their most recent game to the Warriors, the Avalanche began the year with three wins over the likes of the Rangers, Eclipse, and Express. The East Coast Wizards played two games thus far, the first victory coming in a shootout over the Seacoast Spartans, followed by an overtime victory over the Connecticut Chiefs. Returning forward, Andrew Stafura has netted four of the seven goals for the Wizards thus far, proving to be a strong candidate for the upcoming 2020 EHL All-Star Classic. The Seahawks have been able to earn a possible three of four points in the standings so far after falling to the Spartans in overtime and finding victory against the Wolves. Twelve members of the team have been able to find their way onto the score sheet, including three players with three or more points. As we continued down the New England Conference standings, the Warriors have gone 1-2 and two in their first three games, with an impressive victory over a strong New Hampshire Avalanche squad. Drew Blagette proved to be the difference maker for Valley, making nearly 70 saves between the pipes. With only two returning players, the team hopes to build quick chemistry and repeat their performance against the Avalanche. While it's been a frustrating start for the main Eclipse, the team's most recent loss came in overtime against the Seacoast Spartans. Head coach Michael Grace and the first-year team have many things to look forward to as they seek to capture their first win in franchise history. 2019-2020 Coach of the Year Cody Campbell and the Walpole Express have yet to find their first victory of the season, but it's worth to note that they have not had an easy schedule to start. The Express have faced off with two top programs in the EHL and the Avalanche and Lumberjacks. With the core group of returning players, the team hopes to use their experience to their advantage. For the Railers and Rangers, each organization has played just a single game so far this season. As they and the rest of the league continue to monitor the fluctuating restrictions in the different states throughout the league's footprint. Transitioning down south, Josh Fusco and Team Maryland started their season off strong, scoring a total of 20 goals in their first four games. With a pair of wins over the Pro Tech Junior Ducks in the New York Apple Corps, Netminder Bobby McClowski has been between the pipes for all four games, facing a total of 113 shots along the way. McClowski made the transition to Team Maryland after spending three years developing at the EHLP level with the Boston Junior Rangers. The 2019-2020 Organization of the Year in the Mid-Atlantic Conference, the New Jersey 87s, have picked up right where they left off, winning their first three games of the season. Eight players on the 87s roster have averaged a point per game including last year's Rookie of the Year in Dante Terramont. With 17 players returning to the franchise's top team, the chemistry is high and they definitely have an unfinished business type mentality. Continuing along with familiar programs, the Connecticut Rough Riders dropped their first three games of the season, but have since bounced back, picking up wins over the Philadelphia Little Flyers and Protect Junior Ducks. Both Tyler Budapain and Colin Bella are returning players to the league and have each tallied 10 points in five games played. Speaking of the Protect Junior Ducks, the first year franchise has an identical record to the Connecticut Rough Riders, going 2-2-1 two, two, and one throughout their first five games. It certainly is no secret that Braden Patricia has been the shining star for the Protect Junior Ducks. 
netting four goals and telling eight assists in five games. Making our way to the most northern team in the Mid-Atlantic Conference, the Connecticut Chiefs have gone 1-1-1, one, one, and one, picking up their first win of the season against the Connecticut Rough Riders before falling to the New England Wolves and East Coast Wizards. The Chiefs are hoping to bounce back from their overtime loss to the Wizards on Wednesday when they host the New York Apple Corps. The New York Apple Corps and Philadelphia Little Flyers both have yet to pick up their first win of the season, but both squads have many things to look forward to. Head coach Mike Lazazaro of the New York Apple Corps is back in the EHL for his second season and hopes to continue building his team with a handful of returning players, such as Apple Corps' leading scorer, Michael Carducci. The Little Flyers have dropped both games by just one goal, proving they are a tough out no matter who they are facing. Dante Gatone has been with the Little Flyers since their last trip to Providence during the 2018-2019 season, and he knows what it takes to get there. That wraps up our first month around the E-Show, and I'll look forward to seeing you for month two.